15 of the fantasy baseball season. And he has a few pitches rising up the rankings this week. The first guy's Robbie Ray of the Toronto Blue Jays. I know Ray, he got hit hard in his last outing, but before that, he was lights out for the last two or three outings was Ray. And right here, he was a recommended sell-high pitcher for nights like we saw the other night for him versus the Boston Red Sox. And on the season for Ray, 112 and a third, 8-5 and five records, 91 hits, 39 earned runs, 23 homies, which has always been an Achilles heel for Ray. 27 walks, 142 strikeouts, still a 3.12 ERA, a 1.05 whip, and 13 quality starts, which is up there amongst the league leaders this season. So the last couple weeks here for Ray, 18 and two thirds, 2-1 and one record, 10 hits, 4 earned runs, 3 homies. Four walks, 23 strikeouts, a 1.93 ERA, and an 0.75 whip with two quality starts. So right here, his numbers, they're still great numbers, even though he got hit pretty hard in last night's game versus the Red Sox. But like I said, he was a recommended sell-high candidate. I don't see him keeping it up. And last night could have been the start of things where he's going to be a mediocre to poor pitcher this season in fantasy baseball. But he's definitely on the rise with the last three out of four starts, great games for him. July 4th versus Tampa, seven innings, got the loss, five hits, two earned runs, a home and two walks, six Ks, a 2.57 ERA, and a one whip. July 11th at Tampa, seven innings, got the win, one hit, no runs, a walk, 11 Ks, 0.29 whip, and a quality start. July 16th versus Texas, six and two thirds, got the win, four hits, no runs, two walks, eight Ks, 0.90 whip and a quality start in July 21st yesterday versus Boston. Five innings, got the loss. Five hits, four and runs, three homies, like I mentioned, the Achilles heel for Ray. A walk, four Ks, a 7.20 ERA and a 1.20 whip. So right here, Robbie Ray, he had six consecutive quality starts before getting hit pretty hard in last night's game. So he's a pitcher definitely on the rise, but he's just also a pitcher that could go the other way quickly, and that's why I recommended him as a sell-high candidate this week. The next pitch on the rise is Garrett Cole of the New York Yankees. So since Major League Baseball has been cracking down of late with substances on these pitchers, hands and fingers, obviously, for the grip of the ball and better spin rate, Garrett Cole, he was definitely struggling when they first started looking almost every inning and if these pitchers are using something or not. On the season, 120 innings, 10-4 and four record, 89 hits, 35 earned runs, 15 homers, 24 walks, 158 strikeouts, a 2.63 ERA, 0.94 whip and 14 quality starts, a great numbers, no doubt about it. But in the last month, his ERA jumped up to a 3.56. But the last couple weeks here, Cole, he's buckled down and he's back to being a lead pitcher once again this season. 15 innings, 2-0 record. Eight hits, one earned run in the time, four walks, 23 strikeouts, 0.60 ERA, 0.80 whip, and two quality starts in the time for Gerrit Cole, including a complete game shutout versus former team on July 10th at the Houston Astros. So the last few games for Cole, July 4th versus the Mets, three in the third, no decision, six hits, four earned runs, a home at three walks, six Ks, a 10.80 ERA, 2.70 whip in that time. July 10th at Houston, like I mentioned, complete game shutout, three hitter, two walks, 12 strikeouts, 0.56, whipping a quality start. And then July 17th versus the Red Sox, six innings, got the win, five hits, one earned run, two walks, 11 Ks, a 1.50 ERA, and a 1.17 whip with a quality start. So the last two outings, he's been lights out here with 23 strikeouts is Garrett Cole and only one earned run and his next outing is the 23rd at Boston tomorrow. So we'll see if he could have a third consecutive start, a great outing. But right now, he's definitely a pitcher on the rise here in week 15. The next pitcher on the rise this week is Carlos Rendon of the Chicago White Sox. So one of the surprises all season Rendon has been, he's been pretty consistent and one of the better pitchers in all the fantasy baseball this season on the season 96 and two thirds, eight and three records, 61 hits, 23 earned runs, seven homers, 26 walks, 140 strikeouts, a whopping 2.14 ERA, 0.90 whip, and nine quality starts in the time here for Red Dome. So, Red Dome, he's been an amazing pitcher this season for the most part, and the last couple weeks for him 
Seven innings, got the win. I hit no runs, 10 strikeouts, 0.14 whip, and a quality start since the return of the All-Star break. But the last three outings, he's been pretty solid, except a little hiccup versus Minnesota July 1st. July 1st versus Minnesota, five innings, no decision, six hits, four in runs, two walks, nine Ks, a 7.20 ERA, 1.64 whip. July 6th in Minnesota, six innings, got the win, seven hits and a run, eight Ks, a 1.50 ERA, and a 1.17 whip and a quality start. And then July 18th versus Houston, seven innings, got the win, one hit, no runs, 10 Ks, 0.14 whip and a quality start. So his last two outings, 18 strikeouts on only one run given up from Rendon. So once again, he's on a hot streak. And like I mentioned, one of the best starting pitchers in fantasy baseball this season. And he's definitely a pitcher on the rise this week. And his next outing is July 24th at the Milwaukee Brewers. The next pitcher is Logan Gilbert of the Seattle Mariners. So this rookie, he's been impressive this season here. And this is why the Mariners knew he was ready for the bigs here on the season. I know only 54 innings, 4-2 and two record. 41 hits, 21 earned runs, 5 homers, 12 walks, 62 strikeouts, 3.50 ERA, 0.98 whip, and 3 quality starts for the rookie. But the last couple weeks here, he's been one of the better pitchers here. 12 and a third, 2 and 0 record, 5 hits, 2 runs, 2 walks, 17 strikeouts, a 1.46 ERA, 0.57 whip, and a quality start. So I know Gilbert, he's not on the greatest of teams here with the Mariners. They're one of the worst teams in the American League this season. But hey, this kid and Chris Flexen, they're both going out there and getting the job done here for the Mariners. And obviously fantasy owners. The last few outings here for Gilbert. July 2nd versus Texas. Five and two thirds. No decision. Five hits, two earn runs, two walks, six Ks, a 3.18 ERA and a 1.24 whip. July 8th versus the Yankees. Seven innings, got the win. One hit, no runs, eight Ks, 0.14 whip and a quality star in July 18th at the Angels. Five and a third got the win. Four hits, two earned runs, two walks, nine Ks, a 3.38 ERA, and a 1.13 whip. So Gilbert, he's been very impressive to me here this season. And this is why he was one of the top prospects in all of Major League Baseball coming into the season. And he's definitely showing it. He's definitely getting the job done. And the only knock on him is here. He don't go deep into games really that much this season is Gilbert since he got called up. He only went seven innings once and only passed six innings going six and two-thirds once. So right here, he's more of a five to a five and two-thirds inning pitcher. So he's not going to get that quality start for fantasy owners. But everything else, he's pretty much getting it. He's definitely a pitcher on the rise this week. And the fifth and final pitcher on the rise is Jamison Talion of the New York Yankees. So Talion... He was a big trade for the Yankees in the offseason, coming from the Pittsburgh Pirates. But he's been injured for the most part of two seasons before this year, is Talion. But right now, he's really hitting his stride finally here in the second half of the season. And it's a good sign here for the Yankees and for fantasy owners who want to go out there and pick him up. Because obviously, he's on a Yankee team. I know he struggled this season, but they definitely could turn things around. And Talion could be a good asset for fantasy owners on the season. 88 innings, 5-4 and four record, 85 hits, 45 earned runs, 16 homers, 26 walks, 89 strikeouts, a 4.60 ERA, and a 1.26 whip with four quality starts. But the last couple weeks here for Talion, 11 and a third, 1-0 and all record, 7 hits, 2 earned runs, 2 homers, 4 walks, 7 Ks, 1.57 ERA, 0.97 whip and a quality start, so he's going out there, and he's pitching pretty good baseball. The only thing with him, he's not a guy that's really going to go deep into games. Seven innings will be his max most likely, but hey, right now he's definitely on the rise. July 6th for at Seattle, seven innings, got the win, four hits, one earned run, a walk, nine Ks, a 1.29 ERA, 0.71 whip and a quality start. July 11th to Houston, six innings, no decision. Three hits, two earned runs, two homers, two walks, four Ks, a three ERA, 0.83 whip, and a quality start. In July 18th versus the Red Sox, five and a third, got the win. Four hits, no runs, two walks, three Ks, a 1.13 whip in that ball game. And his next outing is July 24th at the Boston Red Sox. So right now, Talion, he's turned things around here in his last three outings. 
only giving up three runs, and he's pitching deeper into games and getting more strikeouts as well. So right now, Talion's definitely on the rise here, and a player that's been picked up in 7% of fantasy leagues this week. So that's a few pitches on the rise here in week 15 of the fantasy baseball season.